Hello everybody, my name is Zura and I am the Codeholic. In this video, we're going to create multi-location weather widget application using vanilla JavaScript. Before we start, I'm going to give you a quick demo of what we're going to actually build. So we have that add new city button when you open the interface. When you click on that, it opens the model and focuses automatically on the input. We type the city name and we can either hit the enter or just click that save button. So let's add a couple of cities right here. So Tbilisi, London, let's add Moscow, hit the enter. So it adds, it fetches the weather API and gets the Celsius information and displays that. And it also saves the cities in the local storage. So these are saved right here. So if I reload the page, cities still stay right here, giving me the information about the temperature of that cities. When I click on the X button, it just removes that city and synchronizes that in the local storage, of course, so that when I reload, I only see two cities right here. So again, add new city, it automatically focuses on the input. That's important thing because I can easily add several cities like Tbilisi, Paris, I don't know, Rome, etc. So I can easily do that. Okay, let's build this nice application and we're going to learn a lot of uh, things about vanilla JavaScript. I have prepared the following repository in which I'm going to plan to put vanilla JavaScript projects. So I already created one video about high order functions. You can check out this video um, on my YouTube channel. And this is the second one, multi-location weather widget, and there are two branches, main and initial version. In initial version, you can see just empty files, which you can clone and follow with me. On the main branch, you will find the final version of that application. If you switch on initial version, go to multi-location weather widget, we're going to see right here, read me. So everything is described right here, what we need to do. And down below, there is a screenshot how roughly how it should look like so i'm going to read that and try to do the same weather widget okay we're going to use the following api weather api for that if you are not uh if you don't have api key for that you can sign up it's free you can get the api key and i'm going to use that api key when actually start working on the project but before that let's read what we need to do Create weather application with possibility to see weather for several cities at the same time. When you open application, you should, you should see button with text add new city. When you click on button, it should show bootstrap model with single input inside it for city name. You can skip bootstrap model if you want and just show an input. So basically I put bootstrap model right here to make it simple for you guys. But if you don't develop on bootstrap, if you don't like bootstrap, that's totally fine. We can just remove the, you can remove the bootstrap and don't use that. The main thing right here is the functionality to get the weather, interact with the API. But more importantly, this is important. We're going to use the object oriented approach for this task. So we're going to have up class and city and the up, cl up class will have a city and that's going to be saved in a local cities array, which will render the following widget. Also, everything should be saved in local storage. It's written right here so that when you refresh, it should still show that added cities. That's a nice feature. So if you run it even on localhost and you choose a couple of cities, whenever you open your localhost application, you can see it uh, because it's going to be saved in your local storage. Okay. So that's, that's cool. Okay. So you get the general idea. Um, you can pause the video right now, open that GitHub repository and just read the whole, uh, read me if you want. So, um, Otherwise, I'm going to open my VS Code and just start writing the code. So if you're new to my channel, I really encourage you to subscribe for more videos like this uh, and just like the video, which will help me uh, to grow. OK, so let's jump into VS Code. So here I have prepared that multi-location weather widget uh, with just HTML, empty HTML and AppJS. OK, and I'm going to include Bootstrap, first of all, because um, Bootstrap makes uh, my life very easy in certain cases. And in this task, I want to just focus on functionality. Why should I start writing my own CSS? OK, so get Bootstrap 
Com. Let's go and go to get started. So there is latest version version five. That's totally fine. Um, let's get this. So here we have that CSS, and this is the bundle right here. Okay. So then we need to have a single button which will have a text add new city or add new location. Okay, well, let's give it bootstrap classes, btn, btn, um, outline primary, for example. I'm going to open my HTML using live server. Okay, and here is my, uh, my button. Let's put this in the center. Actually, I'm going to create a separate div uh, with ID uh, or maybe class weather uh, weather container and let's put that button right there let's give it display flex and justify content center okay that should put the button in the center right so we can give some minor styling to body but let's fo focus on the uh, functionality at the moment okay so when we click on the button it should show the model so let's go to the model section and here we have that. So this is the model. This is a live demo. So we need to add the following attributes to the button. Let's add right here. And I can copy the whole um, model HTML and put it at the very bottom. Okay. And let's give it, uh, we need input right here. So input with the type text, maybe class should be form, uh, form control. Okay, and the model title, let's change into add uh, a new city. All right, let's have a look. When we click, it opens up that model with add new city. And let's change the button text as well into save and that's it so we type Tbilisi for example hit the save and that should already render the make request in the API and render that widget okay now let's focus on the object oriented side of that so we have to create two classes one is going to be application class second going to be city okay so the application needs to have a method at city as it is written in the readme okay so let's give it a name c and i'm going to create in the constructor of the application um, this cities equals an empty array then i'm going to add the city in the cities empty array okay if we call add city multiple times that cities array will be populated. We're going to also have remove city. Okay. And this accepts the city instance. That's going to be the instance of this class. And it's going to have name. And we're going to find city based on the name from the cities and just remove that. Okay. So um, these cities find or find index there are basically different ways to remove an element from the array so one is to find the index and then call splice on that array based on the index second is to filter the array and get everything um, except that specific one so let's try using find index i'm going to show you both ways so find index we get the um, city right here and we need to find those city who has city name the same as C name. Okay. In this case, we get the index. And then on these cities, I need to call splice. I get the index. I give it index as an argument and one. So I want to remove one element from uh, that index. So this is one way. Second way is to filter these cities equals these cities filter and I only want to get those cities whose name is not equal to C name. Okay, using this approach. So this is way two. This is way one. 
Okay, let's try the first one right now. So in the city, we're going to have constructor and in the constructor, we're going to get the city name and I'm going to say this name equals name. Let's have a look at the readme if uh, so that I don't miss anything. Okay, you should create at least two classes up in city. We need add city, we need remove city and the city name, the, the city class should have a constructor which accepts city name and saves it and with the two methods get weather and render. And the get weather will make request in, to the API, pass the city name and return promise which will result into number of Celsius for that city. Render will call get weather, take the Celsius and render container with city name and Celsius. Okay, so we have to create that two methods. So get weather, which should make request in the API and return promise. So let's use the fetch API inside inside that API. And we need the API key for that. So I'm gonna log in right here. Okay, and here's my API key. So I'm gonna get this. You can create your own account and just get your API key because I'm going to delete my API key after I record this video. Okay, so let's go and I need to create two constants right here. So one will be API key and second will be API URL. The API URL will have uh, it's going to be the base URL. So I'm going to copy this and right here I'm going to put the API key. As for the query, I'm going to append it later. Okay. So Q, I need to append the Q uh, parameter. So now I'm going to make request uh, on that um, API URL and append it. So actually I'm going to use the backticks. So on the API URL and Q equals the city name, this name on that URL, I'm going to make request. Then we get the response and we have response JSON and then we have result. So actually I'm going to console log the whole whole result. Okay. So and we need render as well. So render should render the um, container this each individual city with name and the Celsius. Okay, I want to test this part so far. So I have to listen on the save button click, get the city name, create a city instance and pass it to the city. Okay. And when we add city, this, um, this pushes the city, but it needs to render that one as well. Okay. So let's call this render which will iterate over cities and render them. In the constructor, um, I want to specify the HTML element inside which I want to render that one as well. So this element equals element. Then what I do right here is that this element inner HTML equals an empty string. Then I call these cities um, map actually I can map each individual city to an HTML or I can uh, create um, an elements and return the DOM elements so let's first implement the uh, render of the city okay so actually I wanted to test that get weather functionality um, can I test this without implementing the render? I think yes. So if I just create down below an application which equals new app, 
and in the constructor I will just provide the container in which I want to render cities so let's create um, this is the weather container right so inside here I want to create uh, weather locations okay and I want to give it weather locations element right here so document query selector uh, we need dot weather locations so I give that then I create city equals new city I give the city name but I should do this on the event listener so I'm gonna select that button save button so let's give it an ID um, save city so let's listen on that button click so const uh, save btn equals document query selector with id save B, uh, save city then on save button um, add event listener on its click we execute the following function and right here I want to create an instance of the city pass it the city name from the input so I'm going to give ID to that input as well so city name okay uh, actually I need to get the element first so const input equals document um, get element by ID or just query selector I'm gonna use query selector all the time oops city name actually I can uh, put this out there right here so then I'm gonna get the input value and pass it to new city so if I open that city constructor right here I'm gonna call this get weather right now and we can have a look if it makes an API uh, request and what is the con result of the console log okay so let's inspect go to the network and I'm gonna open the console as well okay a new city let's type Tbilisi hit the save it do makes it does make an API request we get everything we have location and current so location is just the information about the location and the current contains what we need so we have a lot of information and we do care about the temp underscore C so it's a temperature in Celsius so we want to take that information so right here so from the result we actually need to take current and then temp C so I'm going to take that information and well I'm gonna return a new promise from here get weather according to the specifications so get weather will make request in the API pass the city name and return promise which will result into number of Celsius for that city okay so we need to return a promise I can use async await approach so async get weather um, const await and const um, result equals await and right here we get that result I think we get result right here and I'm going to return result uh, current temp underscore C anyway I'm gonna debug this so res right here save that and a new city uh, what's going on so we get the whole result I think that's good so we get the whole result from that line but that function is asynchronous okay so whenever I call that function if I put a weight in front of it I'm going to make the constructor asynchronous in this case as well so this will uh, this will get the temperature 
and we're gonna save that in the uh, class so we can actually um, we can actually create property class property this temperature equals to await this so after that if I just print the whole city we should get the name and temperature both so let's reload class constructor may not be an async method okay no problem so let's just change that it cannot be and well I can actually save that right here so this uh, temperature equals the following and this will return this TMP as well so the point is that the render needs to call get weather okay which should return temperature maybe we don't even want to save the temperature in the class uh, property Okay, so I'm just thinking what's going to be the best approach to do that. So we do have that CT. Uh, we obviously need to add that CT in the application. So up, add CT, and let's pass the CT. Okay, so until that, right now it's not going to call the get weather because it's not actually triggered from anywhere. But this uh, where's the application so the application render will iterate sh uh, should iterate over the cities and call render for um, each of them and that render needs to make requests in the get weather so let's change that render into asynchronous so await this uh, get weather which will return temperature and then it's going to return the HTML. So I'm going to return an HTML from here. So my question is that do I need to return an HTML or should I create an element and return an HTML uh, and the element from here or it should just put the element in the DOM. So we have three options. Return the HTML, the whole HTML of this div so in this case it's going to return string second is to create an element of this div and return that element and third is to just put the create the div and just put it in the container whether container or whether locations and just uh, don't return anything so why do we need to return anything maybe we don't maybe we don't need that so let's do like this. Um, I'm going to iterate over the cities from here. Using for each, we get the city. And I'm going to call this, uh, not this, but city render. But I'm going to provide the container in which the city needs to be rendered. And it's going to be the element. So this element. So now in the render, we get the container in which the city needs to be rendered. So I'm going to create um, CT element using document create element. I'm going to give it um, inner HTML. So CT inner HTML equals this. So we need to display the temperature, city name, and the X button. Okay. So let's create um span oops so with class uh, city uh, city temperature and right here I'm gonna put the temperature and I'm gonna also uh, give it the Celsius and C so I have to search for um, Celsius HTML entity Okay, there will be something. This one. Okay, I'm going to copy this, or I can take the HTML code, but I'm going to copy this and put this right here. Then the next one will be city name. So city name, and right here we're going to use city this name. 
and we're going to have also button the close delete ct button times button so inside the span let's give it class as well ct close and right here we're going to use the font awesome icon so let's search for font awesome, or i can just open the following link and copy the following html and put this right here but i need to include that font awesome uh using cdn so i'm going to open cdn uh, js search for font awesome click on that and copy all means css go to my html and paste this right here okay now let's have a look in the app.js again so on the add ct we add the cities and call render this will clear out the locations container and iterate and call render on each city render on each city will create an element and it needs to put that element in the container up using append child so i'm going to call append child on the container for ct element that should already render the city itself okay so let's have a look let's go to the page and open that write the city name click on save and as you see behind that city was added right here we need to work on stylings and the model needs to be closed when the city is actually added okay so let's first close the model down below right here when we add the city um, i need to select the model the model has id example model actually i'm going to replace that with example model replace with add city model then i'm going to select that right here const um, model equals how can i close the model the bootstrap 5 does not include doesn't have jquery anymore right there so if i want to like do some actions call some methods on that um, i don't have dollar sign i need to do it differently so i select my model and then i can add event listener or if i want to call some of the methods right here we have methods okay and we have toggle show hide i think i can just call hide on that and that's it so document query selector add ct model and on that model i can just call hide i think that's that's how it should work so save reload write save okay model height is not a function okay why is not that function so let's scroll up aha uh -huh. so i need to create that my model first okay so i'm gonna call this bootstrap model and i specify this model right here and then on bootstrap model i can call height so let's save this and reload hit the say right here and the model is hidden perfect hey if you enjoy this video so far make sure you like and subscribe and enable bell notifications to be informed for future videos let's get back to the video so now i can work on a little bit of styling i don't want to like lose a lot of time right here so i'm going to give uh, this container um, flex column so flex column uh, i'm going to give it also a line item center 
center. Perfect. Uh, then I'm going to give this div uh, display flex display flex. Okay, I can put this in my CSS. So I'm going to copy this, go to the index HTML and specify this right here. In the app.js, when we create the container, I'm going to give the CT element couple of classes. So class name equals display flex flex uh, column and let's actually have a look so far so let's add to be lissy hit on save this is fine we need a little bit of styling on the celsius to be in larger okay something is wrong i click right here but the model is displayed that's strange why is that happening Okay, when I click right here, the model is displayed. Strange. Okay, um, let's write a couple of CSS. So I'm going to create style CSS or app CSS right here. Let's give it um, city close to have position absolute. I'm going to give it color red or something close to red and let's give it a uh, top 10 pixel and right 10 pixel I'm gonna give the CT temperature a larger font size CT temperature let's give it font size like 24 pixel and let's increase the font size for CT name as well CT name font size 18 pixel let's include that link up CSS save and reload okay so this looks good um, I'm gonna give this one also a line items center and let's give it class also ct element ctl so the ctl needs to have position relative position relative save that let's try it now okay good but it needs also padding top Hiding top a little bit like a 15 pixel or maybe 20 let's increase to 25 maybe we need the overall padding okay that's good we can increase the uh, temperature font size into like 32 for example uh, and Tbilisi doesn't need Celsius obviously so we need to remove that okay I think this looks great and close to what is written right here um, and we need to work about why the model is displayed when we click in this area okay that's something like maybe specific to the bootstrap I'm going to try to find out uh, later and give you information about that um, but the other thing is to try different city by the way this needs to be cleared out so let's go to right here and the input dot value equals an empty value okay this is fine so also when the um, model is displayed maybe we need to focus inside that model that's going to be an additional awesome feature for the uh, user so click on save that's here let's add london okay we have both of them uh, let's add another one let's go for example okay so the temperature looks real however the items needs to be um, horizontally 
So this weather location needs to have display flex. And that's gonna be good. So let's go to the weather locations right here and give it display flex. Also, the close needs to have uh, opacity zero or visibility hidden. Let's give it opacity zero. And it needs only to be displayed when the city element has hover. So city L on hover city close will have opacity one. Save that. Okay, perfect. And let's give the close also cursor pointer. That's great. And we need to implement the deletion process as well. So I'm going to go to the um, app.js and implement that uh, remove city. So the render. Okay, so right here we have this um, render. And when we append this right here, we need to select that city close and add an event listener on that. So const close equals uh, city element query selector uh, city close. We select that. On close we add. Oops. On close we add event listener on click. When this is called, we need to execute remove city of the app. So if we have a look at the readme again, so the application app class will have add city and remove city. Okay, so we need to call remove city of the application, but I don't have access on the application from here. So what I can do is that when the application, when the city is added in the application right here, I can save the application reference inside that city. Okay, so in the city, I'm going to have this app equals uh, null. Okay, that doesn't exist. And then I can provide that application or I can accept an application right here as well as a second argument and save this right here. Okay, so if I go in the index HTML, sorry, if I scroll down right here, when I create new instance, I can provide app right here as well. And that's going to be saved in this app. Um, okay, I think we don't need that information right here, but so basically we get the temperature and use it immediately. I think we don't need to save that, but I'm going to get back to this. And right here, we already have an access to the application. So I'm going to call this application remove city and pass this. Okay. I want to remove uh, this. And if we go in the remove city and check if that's implemented correctly, what we do right here is, is remove that uh, from the array, but we need to render that. So I'm going to call this render right here. Okay, let's have a look. Reload, add city one. It's not displayed anymore, so something went wrong. Okay, what's went went wrong? Um, right here we get the application. Do we have any error? No, we don't have any error. So let's try this again. Tbilisi, hit on save. Okay, nothing is happening. So we added that application right here. Hmm. So let's undo a couple of changes what we did. So we didn't do that. We select that. Okay, let's undo the changes and have a look. Where is the actual mistake? Reload. Okay, this is edit. Let's redo step by step. 
So I select the city close and I add an event listener, click on that. In the city constructor we get the application as well. And I call this app remove city for this. I don't see any problems to be honest. Then we call this render on the remove city, but that should not do anything because we don't call remove city. Okay, it is added now. Strange. Let's try this again. Okay, it is added. Now, if I add this render, I think that causes the problem. Yes, so remove city is uh, called for some reason. Here it is. Okay, it is added, then remove is called. And why does this happen? So, is this actually happening? There is no other place remove city um, is called from. My mistake. This needs to be a callback. Come on, just like this. Yes, right. Reload. Okay, so here we have that. Let's add another CT. That's added. Now let's click on close for that. And it is removed. But why is that pop up um, coming up? So when you click basically anywhere inside that container, it opens that pop up. If I go to the getting started section, okay, I can get the bundle. Or I can get the separate. Let's copy this. Go to index.html. Okay, it still shows the pop-up. I found that very silly, silly mistake. The point is that the, the data BS toggle and data BS target is added on the div, not on the button. Oh, that's, that's a stupid mistake. So, let's try. We have that. Let's... Add another CT, we have that, let's close policy and it's there. So everything is working fine, except one thing, we need to save all that information in local storage. And that's that needs to happen when the CT is added. Uh, we can try the second way, by the way, right here. The removing of the CT. So let's add several CTs. And let's add the second one. And let's remove the first one so it works in the same way however when we add CT or remove CT we need to synchronize that in the local storage so I'm gonna create sync um, into or save into storage uh, which will uh, call on local storage set item and I'm going to specify key as, um, we can just specify CTs and JSON stringify these CTs. Okay, we get the CTs and save it in the uh, local storage. Then we need to read that information on the next load. That's the thing. So in the constructor maybe, we need to do like this. So local storage, get item, cities, if that exists. So we can take out that 
const cities json if that exists otherwise we can take a string uh, json of an empty array and then we call json parse on that on that cities json and finally that will give us the cities then then we need to render those cities so i'm going to call this render which will take the cities and render them during render it's going to call city render city render will go and call get weather so the get weather definitely needs to be called on city render but the point is that um no that's not a good idea because the cities needs to be an instance instances of that city class so right here we need to do it differently so let me revert this back if there exists some value in the cities json we get that and then we check if cities json exists then we do like this um, const cities equal json parse cities json and these cities equals cities to map each city on new city we specify the name of the city that's going to be C name and we specify the application which is going to be this otherwise so we can actually create cities using let right here it's an empty array and if cities JSON exists we're going to parse that and save into cities if that cities JSON doesn't exist that cities will be an empty array uh, if that cities JSON exists, that's gonna parse that and create cities array. Then we're gonna map each individual city into an instance of the city. And when the instance of the city is created, well, actually, we need to also call add city to actually push that and render that. Or we can just call render right so this render which will take those cities right here iterate and call render method on each of the city that should work so let's have a look in the local storage so it's empty we can't call property map of undefined um, right so it should be cities map save okay we don't see anything that's good we add one city it's there okay now let's have a look in the local storage it's empty that was not added because when we add city or remove city we need to save into storage so i'm going to call this save into storage right here and right here as well now let's try to add city again okay we have problem converting cir circular structure to json that's that's understandable so when we try to stringify this right here each individual ct has a reference from here to the application and the application has reference to the cities and cities has reference to the application and that's why we have that circular reference to fix that we need to create two json method on the city and we're going to return an object which needs to be stringified okay so we don't want the application to be included in the stringified version we only need the city name so i'm going to return name is this name using this approach the stringify of the cities should work that's good so let's have a look right here 
Okay, we do see right here cities array name Tbilisi. If I just reload, I see Tbilisi right here. So if I reload that. So let's add one more city. That's going to be London. Hit that. We see Tbilisi and London. I reload. They stays right there. If I remove Tbilisi and keep reloading, London is right there. And I think we are at the end of this application. So let's optimize a couple of things. So first of all, we don't want to save the temperature right here. So we can just return this temp, not this temp, but um, res current temp C. So we, we can return this one. Everything else looks good. I'm going to add a little bit of padding on the body. Padding equals uh, like 50 pixel. Okay, so when the model is opened, I want to focus on the model. So if I go to the app.js, here I have my model. So I can add an event listener on that model right here. Model add event listener. That's going to be, we do have it in the model section. Where is that? show bs something yes show bs model so when it is in a show we need to call the following function input focus okay let's try click on that it doesn't do anything let's use shown i don't know whether this is called or not by the way so focus Right, that works. So when I click on this, it focuses on that. I'm going to type the city name and I will want to also uh, make this working using enter. OK, so click on save. That works, but not with enter like New York. OK, so let's go right here and we have that input and on that input, I want to add event listener uh, key up okay or key press we get event right here and let's print the event to be lissy hit the enter and this is it so I want to take the which has key enter so if event key equals enter then i'm gonna call the following add city so i can create a local function right here add city which will do the following get the um, create an instance of the city from the input add city inside the application hide the uh, model and empty the input value and I can call that add city right here. And I can call that add city right here as well. Remove the console log. Okay, reload. Everything is working. Let's delete those cities. Add new city, Moscow, enter. Add new city, London, enter. Add new city. Uh, Paris enter that's much easier and I do have possibility to easily add cities I can delete with, I have two Londons I can delete one reload that of course I can add restrictions so that if London is already there don't add okay just like this but if you delete one London it's gonna delete both of them because the approach right here uh, is is actually deleting uh, the old London's okay filtering all the cities which is not actually London so in the add city we can add a couple of checks that do, don't uh, add the city if it is already in the list but I don't want to do that let's just let's just be end of the scope of this video so if you enjoy the video make sure you like you share it and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this let me know in the comment section also what you think and that's it. So you can find the source code on my GitHub. Thanks for watching and see you in the next time.